loves and welcome back to another living healthy at 50 segment i am chakisha sams i am the curator of this channel called life with chakisha and these segments that i call living healthy at 50 is my journey of living a healthier life mind body and soul by making healthier options making adjustments in my diet and in my everyday living so I can live another 50. So before we get into what we're actually making today, I want to welcome you, all of my first time viewers. Thank you for tuning in. This content right here is a little bit different than what I would normally do. But because this channel is all about my life, I wanted to focus on something that was really important to me and that was living healthier. Um, I'm at that age where I have to make sure that I am very mindful about everything that I put into my body, whether it is social media, media, food, bad vibes, good vibes. I want to make sure that I'm making all the necessary adjustments that are realistic for my lifestyle. And you can do this too. You don't have to be 50. You could be at any age. I'm trying to create meals that are easy, affordable, and something that I can stick to and actually enjoy. All of these recipes I'm trying with you guys for the first time. I don't have a test kitchen, so I'm not trying any of these recipes out before I make them. I am making them from start to finish with you all. You're getting it from the beginning to the last, well, I'm gonna enjoy the last bite off camera, but you get what I'm saying. So in today's video, I'm not really sure what I'm going to call this dish, but by the time it's up, I should already have the title. You should know what it is, but I'm trying something a little bit different. So today I am trying a dish inspired just by a regular traditional spaghetti dish. I'm doing spaghetti squash with pea protein crumbles, and I'm adding some tomato sauce to just give it that nice familiar spaghetti feel. So if you want to see how this dish turns out from start to finish keep watching okay guys so like i said this is my first time prepping making spaghetti squash um i think i had it years ago but it's been so long i really can't remember if i liked it or not but because i'm trying to again live healthier at 50 incorporate um more plant-based foods into my diet i'm willing to try some different things so i got a smaller one i know these come like really big but this is just for me um so this should give me two servings i don't know but i have my youtube video up so i can kind of <laughs> watch how the young lady is doing it as we go but um what we're gonna do is slice it in half um this shouldn't be that bad i mean it is pretty firm I don't want to split it too much oh gosh <laughs> oh I'm scared uh oh boys and girls don't try this at home Ugh, this thing is tough let me go ahead and get this thing open and I'll be right back okay got it cut it's not the neatest so what I'm gonna do next is like I said scoop out the seeds and that little extra stuff so like if you've ever did a pumpkin same kind of concept you want to make sure you use a big spoon so it makes it easy to kind of scoop it out um now they did say that in which in most videos that i've seen that you can save the seeds and roast them later but i don't feel like i'm you know want to do something like that maybe in the future i don't know but right now i'm okay with just doing it like this so we're gonna scoop this out and then i'm gonna get my pan because we're gonna roast it in the oven and I'm going to kind of follow the directions of the young lady whose video I'm watching. Um, but I've seen a lot of different ways how you can do this. You can put actual vegetables in there. You can put your actual garlic cloves in there. <sighs> yeah. So let's go ahead and get all this out the way. So I'm going to put parchment paper down. I normally do Reynolds wrap, but I haven't been to the store. So there's my Reynolds wrap. Um, but she's using parchment paper, so we're going to stick with how she's doing it. Now we're going to brush the inside with some olive oil. All right. So you can just kind of pour your olive oil in the middle. And then you can either use a silicone 
basing brush or you can use you know they have some with bristles but I like this better because it dries much better and you want to just coat the whole thing in the inside and on the perimeters all right so her next step is seasoning at this point I'm assuming you can just use whatever seasons that you want but I don't want to over season it so I'm gonna do a pinch of salt and they say the best way to do when you pinch the salt is all five fingers but I got nails so it'd be hard <laughs> I'm gonna use pepper because you know I'm a pepper girl and then my house seasoning that I have to use all the time because it has a lot of and I really didn't have to use salt but this doesn't have a real salty taste but this is a seasoning blend so as you can see like it has a lot of different blends in there so I'm just gonna do a little bit of that it smells so good too this seasoning and it's by nature's seasoning so what I'm gonna do because I saw this guy he was making it and he put garlic and because I'm making this more like a pasta with red sauce I want more of that garlic garlicky taste so I'm gonna put a clove in each one of these and then I'm gonna turn it over and put it in the oven Okay, I'm gonna put the garlic cloves inside. Put one and a half in each. And then I'm going to, okay, I'm gonna roast it in the, ov in the oven, cut side down. I've seen some people do it up, but we gonna do it like this. And she says for 35 to 40 minutes. So I'm gonna check it in 30 minutes. While this is in the oven, we're gonna make our, um, meat or fake meat sauce <laughs> i'm gonna keep this recipe real simple um again as i had mentioned probably in some of my other videos i want to use up what i have before i go to replenish on some of my food items um and this meal is kind of right on time because i don't have any more peppers i do still have some onions and garlic and things but the sauce that i found a couple of vlogs back from Kroger has everything in it so this is Mina it's a brand that I've seen a couple of people use before and this is their Moroccan tomato sauce and if you can see it's rather chunky um, let's see if it says what's in here so this has tomatoes bell peppers onions extra virgin olive oil cilantro garlic parsley and spice seasoning so Really, all you would need to do is, if you want this more saucy, is to add either like a tomato sauce, um, tomato puree, or if you have some spaghetti sauce on hand, in which <clears throat> we always do, I'm going to use some of this ragu because I want it to be a little more saucy because this is really thick. So what I'm going to do first is add a little bit of olive oil in the pan, and then I'm going to do my pea proteins, and I'm going to season them up with just some Italian dried herbs, um, probably a little bit of garlic and onion powder, and a little bit of salt. Alright, so these are the pea proteins that I'm using. I got off of Amazon. I've never made these before, so I'm going to kind of look and see what, the, what this says. So it says, cover with equal parts water or broth. And let it soak for five to seven minutes so that's what I'm gonna do because I have 17 minutes before I have to check my spaghetti squash so let's go ahead and do that first okay so before my battery dies I'm gonna use this vegan protein broth um, when you are doing plant-based you are taking out a lot of meat which has a lot of um, protein in it so you want to always find ways to get that extra protein and this has nine grams of protein per one cup so I'm going to do um, since this calls for a third of a cup I'm going to probably let's see I think I'm gonna do the two cupper because I feel like I want to do a cup of the pea proteins and I'm gonna have to do a cup of water therefore I'm going to need a bigger cup. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. All 
Okay, this veggie broth smells very interesting, guys. So we're gonna let this soak up. I have equal parts. It says equal parts, couple of equal parts of hot water or broth. I don't know if I should have made the broth hot, but <laughs> we're here. We're here. What is that? Raisin bran? Not raisin bran. Yeah, the bran cereal. And when you put the milk in there, it just all kind of like gets all crazy looking. Like it's giving me raisin bran and it's sucking up all the milk. <laughs> but yeah, this is an interesting kind of broth. Yeah. So we're going to see. I see it absorbing already. So it says seven minutes. So we will give it seven minutes. Give me time to change my battery and set back up on the stove top. Okay, guys. So... I end up having to drain some of that <laughs> vegetable broth. Um, but hold on, my camera's a little crooked. Okay, it's a little crooked, but it's gonna do what it's gonna do. So the pea proteins have soaked and they have a nice kind of mushy, like meaty kind of texture. So I'm just gonna put some olive oil in the pan. This recipe is off the dome, nothing fancy. I'm just trying to make it like I would make regular spaghetti. Yeah, oh gosh. <laughs> when cooking pre pea proteins goes wrong. Yeah, I don't think I wanna use, not unless it tastes good, I don't think I'm gonna use that broth again. But we're gonna add this to the pan and I'm gonna season it with some Ital dried Italian herbs. This is how I would do my normal meat, some garlic powder. Some onion powder. And some salt. So it's kind of giving me like turkey meat or chicken meat vibes, the color. So I just want to brown it up a little bit. The good thing about this, you don't have to drain it like you would do <laughs> uh, your meat when you make it. It's smelling good though with those few little ingredients that I've added. Yeah, next time I'm just gonna either stick with water or just get regular veggie broth because that protein was looking like protein, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so anyway, so y'all I'm watching that why the TF, why TF I got married? Oh no, who TF did I marry? That has everybody in the chokehold. And I mean, everybody on Instagram. Everybody is posting them watching it and stuff. And I was like, well, I guess I'll talk about it a little bit while I'm cooking because if I talk about it in my vlog, that vlog, you're not going to see that until next Monday. And I kind of feel like it's going to be just a fading topic by then. So I'm going to taste a little piece to see how it tastes. Okay, not bad. I should have used my house blend that I like. Alright, so I did taste this sauce. The sauce is a little bitter. So I definitely know I'm going to have to add some flavoring. Turn it down a little bit. Yeah, so it's more of like a, it says it's a sauce, but to me it's giving me a more like a chunky tomato paste. And my pea proteins don't want to stay in the pan. So I'm kind of glad I didn't have any extra veggies that I would have added because this has plenty of chunkiness to it. And I checked the spaghetti squash is not quite done yet um the young lady that um directions i was following she was like you know it's done when the um bottom or the part that's right side up kind of dents in all right so now we're going to taste this before we add some sauce some real sauce <laughs> okay
So I know some people like to eat their spaghetti squash in the actual squash for aesthetics, but I'm not going to do that because I can already tell half of this will probably be for a meal at work and the other half I'm going to eat tonight. And y'all, <laughs> I'm recording and I have not done anything with myself, so <laughs> I'm going to have to <laughs> record my intro and my outro at the same time I have to get myself together. I'm going to use the rest of this because I like my, anytime I'm doing pasta, I like it saucy. I like it saucy. And let me know in the comments if y'all are watching the, um, who the, who TF did I marry? You know you can't really do too much cussing here on the YouTubes. And y'all know when y'all look layering things on top of things, especially if your meat doesn't have a lot of seasoning, you want to season as you add the new layers. Now, traditionally, I would use sugar to cut some of the acidity, um, but we're going to see. So I'm going to add some dry basil leaves, some dried oregano, another pinch, two pinches of salt. I'm just going to let this hang out while the squash does its thing. Okay, so now we're gonna flip these over. They have, they warmed up enough. Now mine didn't dent all the way in, but you see how that little give there? I know it's ready. So, got my bowl that I'm gonna serve it in, and then my bowl that I'm gonna put the leftovers in. So, and as you saw, I did take the um, garlic that was roasted and I mashed it and I've added it into my meatless tomato sauce. So it says to just kind of pull it gently. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to just take the fork and you can see it's just separating. Hopefully I don't need any extra seasoning. And I think I might be fancy and just actually leave my one that I'm going to eat now in here. I might. <laughs> it smells delicious. Let me taste a little bit that's on this fork. Okay. It has a nice little buttery kind of can taste to it. Um, it's a little al dente-ish. And I'm gonna actually just put it on the plate because I know me and I know how <laughs> I waste stuff all the time. So I'm gonna finish pulling both of these apart and then I'm gonna come back so you can see it all served up on the plate. So we're going to taste this. It smells amazing. Now, you know, I was like, I'm going to be fancy. I put these two little basil leaves on here, but I, sh you know, I'm not going to eat them whole. I don't know. I might. I love basil anyway, but we're going to go ahead and just dig in. We're going to go ahead and just put the fork in the middle, twist like you would do any other pasta. I feel like after I tossed the 
um, noodles or the spaghetti squash, whatever you want to call it. Should have put a little bit of extra olive oil on it, but we're going to see. I don't think I need it, but let's say our grace. Amen. And listen, this spaghetti squash is holding some heat because this plate is hot at the bottom. Let me just eat some more just to make sure this wasn't some um, trickery. Hold on. Y'all. I don't think I'm going to waste my money on buying any other pastas. I have tried like plant-based pastas, cauliflower pastas, and it's just, it's, and I will overcook it and it, it just, it just don't be given. But this, now it's not going to give you a, you know, a regular pasta noodle texture feeling, but it is a definitely... Definitely, definitely great alternative. If you're wanting some pasta and you, you know, you don't want to, you don't want pasta, you want to be a little more healthier, this definitely, <laughs> y'all, I told y'all I'm making all this stuff first time with y'all. I don't do the test kitchen thing to see if I like it and then I, I'm making it and it's either going to be a chef's kiss or a chef's miss and today this is definitely a chef's kiss 10 out of 10 i recommend oh my god and the pea crumbles is giving me like that meat like texture and i'm not mad at how i seasoned it now i am mad about that uh protein <laughs> veggie broth because that joint was mm -hmm. But, y'all, mm -hmm. <laughs> and realistically, I would say if I had to give it a time frame, the longest part is the squash. You know, cutting it, gutting it, seasoning it, putting it in the oven. I did end up leaving it in the oven for 45 minutes at 300 and um I feel like I did between 350 and 365 um, I'm not really sure but you know I think 350 was that sweet spot 45 minutes y'all mm -hmm. this is so good and like I I know me I probably would. Now, I don't feel like I would add any extra olive oil, but I think I might toss, like once I toss up the squash, I might would add a little bit of like flavored, um, like a light seasoning. Not too much salt because you don't want to overdo it, but just a little, either like that nature's seasonal blend that I like, or maybe like a garlic salt or like a... Something like with a little bit of salt to it, but it don't need it. But you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I just want a little more, you know, but <laughs> this is good. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if the spaghetti squash is supposed to still have like a little crunchy taste because I've never made it before, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. If you don't want that crunchy, when I say crunchy, it's like, you know how you roast veggies and you leave it in just enough where it's got just a little bit of bite to it still. It's not mushy. But if you're wanting more of that mushy, either cook it higher or keep it in there a little bit longer. But I'm not mad at this at all. At all. This right here is definitely a great addition to my plant-based journey. 
and trying to live and eat healthier at 50 and it don't matter what age you are for real but this is the journey that i'm going through at 50 with so many things that are changing with my body with my mental and everything else if i can get my diet and what i consume under control it'll make a lot of things a lot better so that's why i'm taking you all on this journey with me so i will make sure that i leave all links that i used um, in regards to the inspiration or the guidance on how to do certain things in regards to recipe ingredients for the um, pea protein crumble tomato mix I would suggest make it like you would make your normal spaghetti just you know try to be mindful if you do sugar try to you know not use as much sugar if you are trying to cut out the sugars um, you know, if you are trying to avoid the salt, just go with low sodium flavorful seasonings. Um, like I said, I just happened to pick up a jar of Moroccan tomato sauce that had everything in it that I would have put in there anyway. Look, when you eat pasta, you gotta make sure you don't got nothing in your teeth. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. <laughs> Cause you know, them basils and stuff get stuck in your teeth. <clears throat> but yeah um just make it how you would make your normal spaghetti um but if you want to follow the recipe that i used um i will leave the name of that moroccan sauce and because i wanted it just to be a little um saucier i just used a traditional tomato sauce you can use canned tomato sauce you can use crushed tomatoes if you want more tomatoes in it um but I just say I would just say however you make your regular spaghetti you can't go wrong with replacing your regular noodles with the spaghetti squash and because we're doing this plant-based journey switching it out for the pea protein crumbles and I'll leave the link I got mine from Amazon because I couldn't find them in any stores close to me um, but y'all this is really really good this is really really good Mm hmm so my grandma and all the etiquette people say it's rude to talk with your mouth full so I'm gonna end today's video here but if you enjoyed today's living healthy at 50 video make sure you do a big favor and give it a thumbs up click that subscribe button and that notification bell that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video and as well if you have any recipe suggestions or if you want me to try something because you're scared to try it yourself and you want me to be the test <laughs> you want me to be Mikey because Mikey eat everything um drop me a comment below and let me know and if the ingredients are affordable and there's not a whole lot of lot of drop me a comment below and I'll be happy to um look at the ingredients list and see if that's something that I'm able to try here in my kitchen but y'all this is all good i almost want to eat the other batch but then that's gonna be a sin because greed is a sin gluttony is a sin and we ain't sinning over here because you know what we're doing we are living a healthier happier life so until next time love peace and good eats